In fact, do you remember a few weeks ago when I was moaning and muttering because Blackie Lawless came into the Skylab to see me and I wasn't here? And Mick Wall had to talk to him. I was furious. Anyway, Blackie heard about it and very kindly came back in to see me with Chris Holmes. Hello, guys. Howdy, howdy. Welcome. Howdy. What have you been doing since, <laughs> well, five weeks ago it was, wasn't it, since you were here? Went back to America immediately and did a video that you're going to see today. With the Blind in Texas one. Tell us mm -hmm. about the single. Tell us about the uh, story behind the, the single. Well, first of all, the expression America, or blind in America, means getting inebriated, shall we say, to the <laughs> point where you really can't stand too well. Right. While the room's doing the Indianapolis 500 around and you're standing <laughs> still, motionless. And I, we've all had that happen. Sometimes. Well, it's a, a story about we were down in Texas and we were on tour, <laughs> and we had a good time. And we kept on having a good time, and we paid for it several days thereafter. And this song is about... I, I, to tell you the truth, I think it's about what we did when we were there. To tell you, you know, I, we don't really remember <laughs> while we were there. The only thing we remember about it is what happened before we really got into it. I do, there's one part in the song where it goes, I fell on the floor, what I said is. I remember doing that because I was sitting on this bar stool, and it's the kind that go round and round like that. Yeah. And I'd done about a 180 on it, and the thing threw me off, and I just remember hitting my head on the oh. concrete on the floor. I had to pick them up. Looking up, you know, <laughs> and everything was going like this. You, know, I felt, you ever seen those dogs in the back of somebody's car with a neck that goes like this? <laughs> You know, yeah. that's what I felt like, and then my brain was coming out of my ear, but we had a great time. Because everything's bigger and better in Texas, isn't it? So they say, I mean... Randy had... Piper, you're, I know Randy Piper's always muttering about it. Being San Antonio, Texas, he's from. As a matter of fact, Randy's family almost owns all of San Antonio, Texas, literally. They have, <laughs> they have a museum there called the Piper Museum. Piper and, Wing. Well, yeah, it's oh, the yeah, Piper yeah. Wing, right. that's what it is. And... Um, as a matter of fact, I know a lot of you people aren't going to believe this, but my great-great-grandfather was General Sam Houston, a la Houston, Texas. Oh, and some other time I'll tell you a story about yeah. that. But uh, my mother's from Houston, and I've got a lot of people that live there still. So, and tell us, Chris, tell us about the video. The video, it's real good. He's most seen it more than me. He's, a, he's an armadillo fan now. Well, we, have the, we have these things <laughs> called armadillos, yeah. and which are like... Uh, rats with uh, pseudo armor on, yeah. is what they boil down to. Yeah. And we have an armadillo race and the thing. And this, what it is is like I'm crawling through the desert yeah. and I'm hallucinating from the de dehydration and lack of water, what have you, sunstroke. And I pass out. I crawl up on this rattlesnake and I look up at the snake and I just go ah, and I pass out. Well, what you see is a hallucination that I'm having in my head. And we go back a hundred years into the old west. We walk in present day outfits. But the cowboys look like they did years ago. Oh, right. And Where was looking it shot, then? Uh, old Tucson, mm -hmm. which is a movie lot in Tucson, Arizona. Did you ever say in the storyline at all? Oh, yeah, of course. I yeah. mean, we don't do anything without yeah. that. But uh, we sat down with a director whose name is Rick Friedberg. Right. And uh, it's done by a company called Kramer Associates, who are the wonderful people that brought you Thriller, uh, all the, the Van Halen oh, videos. It's got to be good. Things. I'm looking oh, forward to seeing terrific. this. Let's have a look, then. This is Blind in Texas. Wasp and Blind in Texas. What a great video. Thank you, thank you, Brilliant. thank you. Now, that single is off your forthcoming album, yes. The Last Command. When, when can we expect to see the album in the shops? October 25th. Great. Now, tell us about the album, because I've heard the word conceptual linked with it. Any truth in the rumours? Well, conceptual to me <laughs> sounds like something a man and woman do together. <laughs> so I wouldn't say this record is that. <laughs> but um, it was an idea that we had that See, heavy rock worldwide is at a peak right now, and in order to keep it that way, I think someone's going to have to come along and show some imagination, and we did a lot of diversity on this album, and this song being the first single, we took a lot of chances doing this mm. kind of song, because nobody in heavy rock is doing material like this now. I mean, Texas, or Blind in Texas, is a basically an old-time three-chord rock and roll song, mm. and nobody in heavy rock does that now, so, and we did some other things on the album as well. I mean. I played like 14 different instruments on this record. Yeah. I played, there's one song called The Widowmaker, which mm -hmm. I played uh, an electric sitar mm -hmm. in the beginning. I played this keyboards all over this record as far as synthesizers and things like that. We layered the sounds together with the guitar, so you hear the guitars and it sounds like an extension of the guitars, but you hear things moving around in the back. And five years from now, you'll listen to this record and you'll hear things that you'd not heard before mm -hmm. the first time. So we spent a lot of time preparing it. We didn't work on it as much actually recording time, we first album took four months, this record took seven weeks. Crikey, because you sort of took the blinders off or the blinkers off of this, didn't you? Most bands sort well, of that stick was to th the same... That was the thing, and because of what I previously stated about, about unless someone comes along and shows some imagination, it's gonna, heavy rock's going to go back to where it was. 
about three or four years ago. It'll never die, mm. but it just won't be as popular as it is right now. Mm. So I think it's important that someone comes along and really shows some imagination because sure. this whole record was designed to be listened to with headphones on. There's a lot of stereo panning going on back and forth, and you hear lots of little things all over it, which is like old-time radio when you close your eyes and it lets your imagination run wild. And hopefully this will show other groups that, yeah, you can try new things and you can experiment, and you don't have to stick to the same format to be heavy mm. all the time. Well, the album's different. What about the show, the stage show? You can pack away the chainsaws <laughs> and raw meat and <laughs> torture. Every time we do a show, or every time we do an album, we'll do a tour. And right. so therefore, the, the show will change every time. The meat's gone, the blood's gone, the girl in the rack's gone, all those things are gone. I'm sure there's a lot of people, when they hear that, are going to be disappointed that we're not doing some of those things. But every time we do a new show, we'll video that show. Mm. And if you want to see the old show, just look at the video. I mean, it's there for all time to see. It doesn't really make any sense to do the same show over and over again. I mean, we, we've had ideas mm. for years yeah. that we wanted to do. Just in the beginning, we did a very basic type show because we didn't have that much money. Mm. I always made the statement, I said, if Wasp got money, we'd be dangerous. <laughs> well, now we got money. <laughs> so, so when we expect, Chris, when can we expect to see you touring Europe and UK? Late March. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 86. Might be sooner than that. Might be even sooner, yeah. but that's a worse possible situation right now. We're going to have to see what goes on in the States because last year we started in Europe first and we went to Japan and then America. Now we're starting America, Japan, and Europe. So in other words, every other year we will alternate where we oh, start from. What about Scandinavia? I know you've been over in Scandinavia doing the promos. What last about are you, any news on when you're going to be playing over there? Well, the whole European tour will coincide right around that, that will same be, area. There's no problem there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Well, thank you very much for coming to see me. No and uh, come back again tell me about General Houston. Okay. <laughs> well, I've been looking at your feet. It's <laughs> very nice feet. You know, we have foot fetishes in uh -huh. America. Uh -huh. And for all you... Well, thank you, Wasp. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Why bond?